Today is June 15th, 2020, Monday. Last week, Wednesday, the 10th, a 24-year-old African-American man by the name Robert Fuller was found dead, hanging from a tree. Ten days before that, another African-American man, age 38, named Malcolm Harsh, was found dead, hanging from a tree. Both were done in Southern California, 50 miles apart. Both are being reported by the police as a suicide. Now, I don't have any more details except that Robert was found near uh, a church and a library in front of a city hall. Malcolm was found by a homeless encampment near a library. And both families of these men say they do not believe they were suicides. They were not suicidal. They were not depressed. And Robert Fuller's sister says her brother's death did not make sense. I found uh, this article uh, yesterday, the 14th. Um... And this led me to another story um, that brings us back six years ago in North Carolina, where a 17-year-old African-American teenager, he wasn't a man by then, uh, he wasn't really considered a man, he was still a teenager, was found dead hanging uh, from a swing in a trailer park. Now with this story, there's a lot more information on. Oh, and it was also considered a suicide. So when we look at this case of Lennon Lacey, we found we find that, um, well, well, we'll get to the family and their information. The um, night before he was found dead, he was going to go out on a jog at night because he had asthma um, and um, when the temperature goes down in the day, uh, at, at, when, at, during the night, um, it's easier for him to breathe and to jog. He talks to his mom, tells him, tells her that he's go, he's going out. Um, she says to take care of his clothes from the clothesline when he gets back, and he um, set out his clothes and his um, equipment for football practice that was going to happen the next day. So he had already had, he had plans, um, and was laying out clothes for himself that he was going to wear the following day. Um, and he was, um, a very loving, loving uh, son. He uh, loved his family. He um, so in, he wasn't suicidal. He was um, at the time he was um, a family member had passed and he was upset. He was sad. Um, but that does not mean that you are depressed. Depression is a very different thing than being, uh, feeling like, uh, sad. Um, so that's just the information from the family side. Now we get to the information on what was found on, uh, Lennon's body. So he was, uh, hung 
with two belts. Now, Lennon's mother knows every single piece of clothing, item, uh, property that they own, that he, uh, that Lennon had. Those belts did not belong to him. They didn't belong to his family. You know, they don't know where they got them. I mean, it just, so that's one bit of information that doesn't make sense. Um, second, um, one that didn't, uh, wasn't too clear to me. Either he, they say that he was found with ants um, on him or that, that there was, there were ants on him, that his face was swollen from uh, that. Which, um, I don't know, it didn't, didn't, wasn't really clear to me. Um, and more, that makes more, what would make more sense is that he was, um, beaten before, um, he was killed. But, um, the third bit of information that I feel is the most damning bit of evidence that clears that this was not a suicide, um, is the fact that he was found with, um, shoes that were not his, that were not even his, the same size that did not have laces. Now he went out on the jog with, uh, he was wearing Air Jordans. Some nice pair of, uh, like I, I believe red Air Jordans. Or, um, and then when they found his body, they were, and, and uh, those Air Jordans that he was wearing, he's size 12. The shoes that he was wearing were size 10 and a half, white Nikes, I believe, and um, they were old and they didn't have laces in them. I'm not a police officer. I don't, I'm not an investigator. I didn't go to school for it or anything, but I can put two and two together. Someone, probably once he was dead, took the shoes off of him and put his, their shoes on him and took off the laces because they needed those, just in case. And that was, that, yeah, it was um, murder. Six years ago, this is ha this happened, and um, and that's not been the only case of a of a African American being found uh, hanging in public, and then was reported as a suicide. That's uh, there's been the, I uh, there was about uh, around twenty cases. Um, years uh, before Lennon and so this has been going on for a long time and I'm not and not a lot of people have been um, hearing about it I haven't really I didn't even know about Lennon Lacey's um, death um, until yesterday. And then I kind of, and then after that, I, I really dug into, um, as much as I could, um, going down the rabbit hole of, uh, which led to the history of lynching in America. Um, I believe it was in the thirties where it was, that's where, um, I wouldn't say it started. It's where it started getting, uh, popular, popular nearly every day. At least one African American man was found hanging from a tree kill. But back then 
they had mobs of white people um, public, publicly brutally murdering this uh, African American. And they would cheer, they would laugh, they would beat the body, they would take pictures, they would pose with it, they would, and make postcards of it and send. And so that was, and this was all, you know, during the, uh, down the South. Um, but the thing that we're seeing now isn't that the, that, that white mob might not be around publicly showing their faces, doing the murdering. Now that it's now that, you know, you get some, you know, some picture of that, you go to jail because they see you, they can spot you and then they can arrest you. Now they do it very secretly. They do it and it uh, not only do these happen, people, uh, African Americans being murdered, but then the police are botching or they're just not caring, they don't investigate. They don't even rule homicide as a possibility, even when there's evidence, even when the family has information saying it, it doesn't make sense that they, they weren't depressed and that they weren't even, they, they couldn't like, having depression and anxiety and had a, having um, um, contemplations of suicide you don't just be fine one day talking and, and making plans and then just go out. You don't just kill yourself for no reason. There are, there is a lot that you, that is, that happens before you get to that point. Your natural, I would say, instincts. You might say in your head or out loud that you want to kill yourself, but really, you're even, there's like, there's that part of you inside that knows it wants to stay alive and will cry out for help, whether it's cutting yourself, self harming, um, acting out, whatever. There are signs of when someone is suicidal. You don't just, you don't just randomly become suicidal in a, in a couple minutes and then kill yourself. That never happens. It's either, for most people, it's years upon years, sometimes their whole life they're, they're depressed and, um, and then, um, finally do it. And, and a lot of the times they, um, they leave a note or they, you know, they, they, they want to almost kind of say either that they're sorry for, you know, to, to their loved ones or that, you know, that this is just, um, that they can't do it anymore. Um, they want to let them know so they have some sort of closure. Um, and with all these cases, the same thing keeps coming up is that, um, this isn't, a, this isn't a, a theme. None of these men, none of these African Americans were suicidal. And then they, then they're, then, 
then they are reported as suicides without even a little bit of um, hesitation or investigation in a homicide or other means. So, it's, I, it's, so it's 2020, lynching is still happening. It's, you can't deny it. And, and even, even now the police are not even ruling lynching as a possibility. They're in the, um, one bit of thing there's, they're, they're not, they don't want to, you know, even, um, investigate that it was a lynching. They, they, they make it out as every bit of evidence in that, that it was a suicide, but the puzzle doesn't fit. Those pieces, they don't fit. So now we are dealing with cops who are killing, either killing African Americans, or specifically African American men. They're either killing them, or they're botching their investigations on their on when they when they die, are found hanging in a public place. They they don't care they don't you they don't do their jobs they're supposed to serve and protect they're supposed to rule out and investigate when someone is dead especially when it doesn't make sense to the family so the main uh, message I want to convey is um, that the police uh, this shows just another instance of what um, police are doing wrong but what is still happening um, in our society that white people are lynching black people still and getting away with it. It's still in 2020. And I, um, I watched a documentary called, um, Always in season about um, Lennon Lacey and then the history of lynching. Um, and a lot of people, they don't, they think that lynching is a part of the past, that it's just, it's a part of history, it's history, it's gone. It changed. There might not be a whole mob publicly, you know, showing it. they're not being public about it. They're being sneaky and private. They're, they're doing it so that they, they don't go to jail, so they don't get found. So not only are we, are we dealing with, you know, the white supremacists out there killing black people, but we got the cops killing black people too. And then also making all these investigations, um, that they just rule it out as suicide before they even get any other information before that, uh, you know, it's, it's like if a man, a white man was found hanging 
in a predominantly black neighborhood, they wouldn't rule out suicide. They wouldn't, you know, they would actually investigate because that's just the way uh, that it is. That. Black people are not being valued. They are not being treated equally in America. For everyone out there saying all lives matter, blue lives matter, you may, oh, you only need eyes to see that we have a real problem when it comes to the way African Americans are being treated in America. If white people were being killed every day or nearly every day by another race that are, that are in our society and in our uh, po uh, politics uh, that are ruling over us, we would, <laughs> there would be something done, but And it makes me, uh, it makes, you know, it makes you feel helpless. So I encourage uh, you, anyone out there listening to not be quiet, to not watch as this all this, all these things that are happening to America. If you are quiet, you're condoning it. And I, I'm not going to sit by and continue just watch, watching this, this happen to uh, our country. We need to change. We need to be better. It's not 1930s. It's not the It's not the 1930s. It's 2020, and we need change. If black lives don't matter then no one's lives matter. If we're not all equal, then no one is equal. So I, I, I say to you, say, say to anyone who cares to try to, you know, talk and express your feelings to get involved in politics, to to, to fight this. Because if we don't fight this, it's going to continue and it's going to get to the point where, I don't know. I think we are. I think we already gotten to that point where it's already to the point where it's breaking. It's the breaking point, and that's why I feel the necessity, the urgency to do something. Because if we do nothing. And we're not only letting this continue, we are putting the power, putting the power into the, all those people's hands that are killing people, that are killing African Americans. So, um, I don't know. I hope that you learned something 
I, I definitely um, learned a lot. Um, and I will continue to learn and I will continue to um, try and fight this that's going on in America because I just, um, I, if, if I was, I, I kind of, um, thought to myself, if I'm, you know, 10 years from now, I look back at 2020 and, uh, if I don't do something that I'm going to be ashamed of myself for not trying to do something. Even if it's something as simple as talking But no, I, I, I truly believe that we're at a point now where if you're not part of the solution for the change, you are the problem. And we have a sickness in America, systemic racism, police brutality, all and, and this isn't, this is just one aspect of what's going on in America and what's wrong, but it's, it is so important. The priority is so high that it's, we, we, we must do something. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. So get involved. Yeah. That's it. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just tired. I'm sure a lot of people are just tired of this from uh, the, uh, all uh, what's going on in America right now. So, um, that's it. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>